Hi ladies, we're gonna be doing our August demo. I'm gonna do the background papers um, first. So I've got my page put together for August. I've done all of my hexagons. Remember on this one, your blueprint is gonna show you to draw some of the black lines on for your hexagons. Don't do that. We haven't done it on any of the other calendars, so we don't wanna start doing it on this one. So get out your supplies. You're gonna need your chocolate bronze gilding polish. You're gonna need your white paint, which seriously, I've used so much of this, I've ran out. And you can't buy these anymore, they're discontinued. So I've been filling it up with the media acrylic paint. Make sure you do not throw out this dispenser for your paint. I grabbed a screen. Um, this is just one of the you know screen printed ones, so I'm just gonna use this one. It's one of them that was handy today. I've got my splatter brush and I'm ready to go. All right, so I've got some pretty large flowers that I'm doing this month. I'm super excited. We're doing hydrangeas. So with that, we're going to be covering up big spaces here and there. So I think what I'm going to do is go higher here and then maybe right in this corner and right at the bottom. So let's start with that. We're going to do our template first. Put your template where you want it. If you're afraid of getting anything on the picture mat, make sure you cover that up. I always like to be safe, not sorry. So I'm going to cover that up, <clears throat> get out my gelding polish, load it up. And I'm priming it. Like a lot of people don't prime it enough. You really need to prime your brush so that it's covered and you've wiped it off. I've had people say, I never seem to get enough on there. And it's probably because you didn't prime your brush enough, which is pushing that gilding polish into it. That would be the priming part. Okay, so that looks pretty good. So I'm gonna do some random. Let's try not to move that screen much. Do it again, wipe it off. Okay, that looks perfect. This is a really tiny print, so you really gotta push that one in there to get this one. All right, we're gonna do a little bit up here. So I think I'm gonna keep that on there and just slide it down a little. My August word and my saying is gonna go up here. Push it up. All right, that looks good. And then right here on this side, make sure if you're doing it on your table, you've put down some scrap paper. I've got a pretty table that I've got tons of stuff on, so I'm not worried about it on this one. Prime your brush. All right, perfect. So let's do the paint. Let's do everything at once for each layout to this week. I'm gonna cover up more of my photos just so I don't get any of the splatter paint on them in that little spot right there. Okay, so that looks good. So I'm gonna do a little bit of paint in this section, a little bit down here. Maybe I wanna just make this slightly smaller. So I'm just gonna fold that paper so it gives me a little bit more space to spray and then right in here. All right, splatter brush time. Load up your splatter brush. Don't be afraid to get a nice dollop of paint. We're going for that real kind of artsy look, not a splat, but a spray of the paint. A little bit more on there. Oh, probably should have moved my uh, gilding polish there, it looks like. Oh, that's good. That's a perfect one. All right, love that. And then on this side, if you're doing this at home, you're afraid of your carpet, make sure you've got your um, splatter shield. Oh, that's good too. All right, so with that, we're gonna take these off. I'm gonna throw them away because I don't wanna reuse them just in case I get paint on something else. So we'll take those off. And that is gonna be the base for this layout. And we're gonna switch to our leftover. So I'm gonna grab that one. Which I've got right here. Let me make sure I get it on there a little bit straight for you guys. Okay, so here's this layout. Now I'm gonna have another big flower probably right in here. So I'm gonna do along this side and then kind of right in here for my um, screen that I used. So let's just cover some of this up. So I make sure I don't get any of my photo mats. That makes me crazy when I make them dirty 
even though a picture is going to be on it. So let's set that pretty high. Grab my gilding polish and push it into the screen. Remember, you're dabbing up and down. Do not go across. If you do that, you're going to have a hot mess. All right. That looks really good. And then let's do one on this side. Love it. And then here we go. One more on this, and then we should be good. Always putting it on my sponge, pushing it in. That looks great too. All right, last but not least, let's do a little bit of splatter paint. So let's cover up the rest of these pictures. That looks pretty good. Grab a dollop on my splatter brush. Let's grab a little bit more. Oh, I love that. I'm making a mess today. Look at that noon manicure and I'm gonna have white paint all over it. That's okay. The paint will come off. Gilding polish, and that is forgiving. Let's get a little bit more on that side. And then we should be all set. That's a nice, ooh, big old splat. Perfect. All right, let's take it off and see what we got. All right, while I'm wetting that dry, I'm gonna start working on the flowers, ladies. All right, ladies, we're gonna be making our August flowers today. So we've got hydrangeas, little pink flowers, and then some foliage that we're gonna use. The hydrangeas are probably the trickiest one, but um, I'm gonna show you how to do it and make it pretty easy. Make sure you've got your Zig Writer out. Make sure you have pop dots, your adhesive, cotton balls and Q-tips along with your chalk and um, a toothpick. I'm using these types of glue dots with the little, you know, uh, individual circles on it and then your yellow glitter glue. All right, so once you've got all of that out, we're going to start assembling the hydrangea. So these are all of the pieces that you're going to need. I'm just gonna set this aside and pull off the pieces for my hydrangeas. You're gonna have three large hydrangeas and one little one that you're gonna do. But each hydrangea, um, for the large anyways, is gonna have a center. And I actually, I put it kind of to the edge about like that, but I'm gonna put pop dots on this first. So it gives that um, hydrangea a foliage or a dimensional look. All right, so adhere your pop dots to it. You know, has, that's plenty, it's probably too many. And then once I do that, I'm gonna take these off. And I'm gonna glue it down, give myself a, enough room for one lower level, and then we'll have a top level. So this is it. You're gonna do individual pieces of these little guys. We're not doodling on them, so at least we don't have to do that. But we're gonna kind of bend them up like that, and then use these glue dots. They come off on both sides. I don't know why that happens. And I just put the glue dot on there and then I start applying the petals. Now I do, anytime I'm working with something like this, I do like to skip around so that it doesn't get too, um, like it looks more random when you skip around. So I prefer to do that. So I just pick up a petal, make sure I squish up the um, pattern side. And I'm gonna do that whole bottom layer first. So I'll just pick them up, make almost like a four corners that you're folding up like that. So it gives it like a flat bottom. 
on some. Some I fold in half and then start placing them around. I like to do the whole outer edge first. Peggy White, this one is for you because I know how much you love these flowers. The more tedious, the better for you. <laughs> oh, she's gonna kill me when she sees this. All right, so let's get another one. Well, I hear a child. There we go. I'm just gonna keep doing this until I've got all the edges filled for the outer. That looks really good. I'm gonna pop these up and throw that one in there. So that looks perfect. So now we're gonna fill the inside. And that didn't take me too long. And you guys are gonna do three large. Oh, I don't think I got glue on there. Nope. Let's try that again. And then you're going to do one small one, which is going to be one layer. It doesn't have anything pop dotted in the center. So just pick it up, push it down. These ones, every time I make one of these flowers, I'm like, oh my God, this is my favorite. I don't know, hydrangeas, I'm really partial to. So these are probably my favorite so far. I'm in love with the yellow flowers for August, they are, or July. Those are just incredible. But I think it's because I love the yellow because you don't really see that a lot in when we're scrapbooking. So, but these white hydrangeas, which we're gonna give a tint of green to, are just pretty spectacular. And honestly, they're not all that hard to make. It's gonna take me a few minutes here to do one, so probably take you about 10 minutes to do them all. All right, so that looks actually really good, you know. And you can smush that down so it goes into your book or whatever. You just want that whole texture look. All right, so that looks perfect. I'm gonna set this aside, because I'm not doing all of them. And we're going to, let's get them all assembled and then we'll go back and we'll chalk the different ones. So we'll set that one aside and we will do our little pink flowers, which is three pieces. This one we have to draw on. So we're gonna get our zig writer out because you always wanna do that stuff first so you don't ruin your pen or marker. And we're gonna just go along the edges of the individual petals And then we're just gonna draw a couple lines up through the center. Let's do the other one and then we'll do our dotting and dashing for this. Quick, quick, nothing to worry about. Do the little lines. And then you're gonna do some of the dotting Do the thin ones first, and then we'll go back with the fatties. A lot of times I like to have mine together. So let's go ahead and put this little guy together. We need one glue dot in the center, and then it gets off set. All right, and then we have a little red oval that we're gonna put right there. We're gonna do one small line on top for him, and then we're gonna do lots of dotting. Now we'll go back with the big one. Perfect. Okay, so that looks good for this one. And then of course you can always, you know, after we go and do all the, um, chalking we can go back and fluff it up so that it gives it a little bit more dimension but that looks good for the pink flower okay so let's grab the blue one now and we this is a pretty quick one you're going to use your fat end of your marker and you're going to color the stem black 
We've done this a couple times now with the different um, types of foliage. So cover the stem black. Make sure you come up onto the flower. There we go. That looks good. I'm gonna take the thin end and I'm just gonna do a little half loop around the top of them. Quick and simple. And then we'll do some small dots towards the bottom. And then we'll do a couple big dots on each one. All right, big end, I'm gonna do, let's turn this around so you can see. So we're gonna do a little point, a little point at each tip. And then we'll do a couple big ones at the bottom. Yeah, I know you guys can hear Bax in the background. He's trying to get into something. So there we've got our little blue stem. We got a pink flower and we have a hydrangea so far. So let's grab the other pieces. We'll do the hydrangea leaf next. And this one's pretty simple too, just a matter of following along. So we're gonna start down the center, give it a nice curve to it. And then we're gonna come in from each point. So you're gonna come to the center with each point on that flower that's cut. And I'm gonna do the other thing for the other side. Start at the tip and work it in. All right, so that is it for this one. Besides, now I'm gonna do a straight line between each one of those points. And I'm gonna start dotting and dashing. Oh God, I'm sorry guys, I gave him a ball with bones in it to keep him occupied. And now all I can hear is him gnawing on it. Go back with your fat end here and there. That looks great. And then we can set that aside. And last but not least, this little guy. So this one's pretty simple. I just drew a small line down the center just to accent the stem on each one there, okay? And then I just did a loop around. And then we're gonna make a little oval at the tip of these. Okay, two more. There we go, perfect. All right, so now we're gonna draw like a little ovaly circle at the tip. Make it quick, make it simple. Oh, look, I forgot that one, there we go. Okay, so now that you got that, and it looks like it's got little holes inside of it, we're gonna go back and we're gonna do the dotting and dashing. So we're gonna do it heavy only on one side. And I did pretty much the right side of all of these. So I started where I put the oval and just worked down a little bit. Because we are gonna go back and do the fat ones again. Okay. Dealing with such small pieces, it's hard for me to hold and show you guys at the same time. You think I'd know by now, this is eight months later, we should have this perfected. All right, so there's that. Let's get out our fat end. And we're just gonna do, again, on the same side, a couple big dots. Or three, or four, whatever you're feeling. Okay, just for some texture. All right, that looks great. So that is it 
for the um, drawing that we're going to be doing, or the doodling. So I'm going to grab a new sheet for you guys so it's easy for you to see what we're doing next. And I'm going to start chalking. So let's start with the hydrangea because he's actually pretty simple. Um, you're going to need a Q-tip and just grab my chalk I forgot to grab out. So I've got my chalk out and I'm going to put one green swirl in the center of every single petal because white hydrangeas have like this green tint to them that I love and they get so big and fluffy. Okay, so that's good. And then I'm gonna go back with my cotton ball and I'm just gonna brush it along the chalk, okay? And then pick it up and do some of the edges. Pick that chalk back up, brush some in the centers. All right, and that is it. There is my white and green hydrangea. And then for this one, I said I got this applicator and it came in handy because I did a dollop of paint in the center of each one of these. So I liked how thin the tube was, that was kind of nice. You can use your toothpick. That's what I would have used if I didn't notice that this had a great applicator on the end. Okay, that is that. Let's set that aside. And we'll go back and do the glitter glue when we've got it all together um, on here. So we're going to pick that guy up, set it over there, and let's do the pink one. Pink one, we're going to do a nice red color right in the middle of all the veining that we did. Nice little red there. And then I'm going to go back with black, and I'm going to do the edges. Just the points, technically, not the whole edge. And then I did a heavy black in the center there. And then we can go back and let's clean that up. That looks perfect. Now that can be set aside. We'll grab our leaf. I did a real dark green, whatever your darkest green is. Did it down the center. And then on some of these lines, And then I grabbed black on my cotton ball and I just did some edging as I was blending in that green. I always like a little highlight too. So a lot of times I'll go back and just do one lighter color in there just so it gives it a little light source, I guess. All right, so for the blue ones, I don't think it needs anything. So we're gonna leave those alone. And for this one, we're also going to leave this one alone. We're not going to do anything with chalk. So let's remove this, put it together, and we will show you the glitter glue. Okay. So I always like to have these glued down now. So I'm just going to make a spot for my hydrangea, push it down. Okay. And here's one of my leaves. I'm gonna tuck that right in there. Let's do this one here, that light green. And we'll push it in. Just so nothing moves while I'm showing you guys how to do the glitter. And then lots of layers, so we'll tuck the blue one in. And last but not least, our pink flower. Okay, beautiful. So with that, now we're gonna start our um, glitter glue. I would let all this white dry, um, but you know, we never have time for that. And I do have to do some white highlighting on some of these. So let's, let's actually start with the white highlighting. I have a friend of mine who made me these metal pins and I'm using that instead of the toothpick. I like them, but I wish it had a point to it just because sometimes they seem a little big, but they're awfully darn precise. So it is nice. I got friends that make me great stuff. Let's see. Let's 
All right, that looks good. And then each one of these I did inside that oval, I did a white. Perfect. And then I also did a little bit of the white on, I'm just gonna clean that off. Did a little bit of white on the flower. Okay, that looks perfect. All right, no white on the blue. And then we're gonna go back with our glitter. So I like to glitter heavy. Give me a second because I need to get this yellow down at the end. I'm almost out, it looks like. So I did, wherever I put the white, I did on kind of the sides of the um, paint. This one's going to be tough because I really, I didn't realize how empty my glitter glue was. That's what happens when you keep using the same colors over and over. So yeah, note to self, ladies, if you're eight months into doing this, you're gonna need a new glitter. Sorry. I'd stop the video and go get a new one, but I'm at home today. So there is no stopping this. So we're gonna do the flower real heavy. Coming out where those veins are too. And that'll dry super flat and look really cool. And then I wanna do the green. We're gonna do kinda underneath where that white is. Just a little bit. That looks great. And then just one little dollop on the blue things because I like glitter. And I've never done the leaves so far. I've just been trying to stay away from doing the leaves so not everything had glitter. That's it, ladies. That is our August flowers and how to put them together. I hope you like them as much as I do.